Hello IP Exchange, we are at Census and Test in Nuremberg 2024 where we're going to be talking to Goran from a company called IC House and he's going to introduce us as to how he uses optical sensors in place of maybe where you might be using magnetic sensors to make sure that your industrial application is doing exactly what you want it to do. So, if we look at these applications here, where we might be looking at LiDAR, or we might be looking at robotic arms, or we might be looking at some sort of industrial sensing that needs to be done, he's going to introduce us as to how he uses his optical system on chip to do that measurement to make sure your application is doing exactly what it needs to do in the way that you exactly need it to do. So, Goran, explain to us how you do that. You're welcome at the sensor test at IC House. Um, what you see here is uh, our new ICPXL3212. It's an optical reflectable sensor. Uh, it's made in a, or built in a 3x3 optical package, optical DFN package, uh, which embedded an LED and photodiodes on chip. Uh, the only thing that we need is a reflective target. It can be a glass target or a aluminum target or a stainless steel target and uh, all these reflection hits back the photodiodes and then we can recognize the position in a certain resolution which can be set up by the customer. Right, so just talk us through what exactly is this system on chip and exactly what is in there and what, and what you're able to offer. Yeah, we have embedded a blue LED. It's an LED with 460 nanometer uh, wavelengths light and uh, we have an optical window where we have the photodiodes which uh, recognizes the changes of the reflection of the targets or the bars that are reflected to the sensor. And therefore, we have a certain amplification on, on the chip and a certain interpolation of, of the position that we can get out from uh, these signals. Right. So if, we were, if, if today we were looking at, let's say, a magnetic sensor today, and you decided you were thinking, right, I'm going to switch to an optical sensor, what sort of differences, what are, the, what, what are the benefits of doing that and making that switch? Optical sensors or optical encoder ICs are much higher in the resolution and accuracy because the signals which comes from the optical targets are much preciser than uh, uh, magnetic tapes or magnetic uh, rings or magnets. And therefore, the sensor um, has uh, from the start a much more pure signal which can be better amplified or better signal conditioned uh, by the sensor itself. Right. So is it is that the speed as well and the quality of the data that you get? Yeah, back? it makes you um, it makes it better for uh, the resolution. The resolution is much more preciser. The accuracy at the end is better, and of course, uh, it makes it better to regulate the motor if the native resolution is much better. Right. So if we would take some of those really key applications, so if let's say we're taking LiDAR, for instance, just talk us through the implications of getting a very precise output and input in the, in the example of a, of, of a LiDAR. Yeah, when we talk about LiDAR, and especially for automotive, they are interested, or the customers are interested in long range LiDAR. That means uh, up to 300 meters uh, distance. Uh, therefore, it's very important to have uh, these uh, mirror rotated position at an exact position. Yeah. And therefore, you need a sensor that is uh, high accurate and uh, good resolution. Yeah. And therefore, these kind of sensors are perfect fit. Right. So if you take that mirror reflection, as, uh, you, if you think of the LiDAR, what are the implications if you get that wrong? Uh, the resolution at the end, that means uh, the, the, the laser light that you get back from, from the, from the uh, target uh, is uh, maybe uh, half a meter away from the expected <laughs> position. So it's a big deal, isn't it? Yeah, definitely it's a big, big deal. deal to what have looks a like a very, very minor, minuscule, yes. tiny little thing, yeah. when in a LiDAR application, if you get that tiny, tiny thing wrong, you're half a meter out right. in the real life application. That's a big deal. That's right. a big any, deal. Any degrees makes a change in meters uh, yeah. on a 300 meter distance. Yeah. And, and, and that would be a typical example of where the real benefit of going from a, a magnetic sensor to an optical sensor. Right. Because you yeah. get a real refinement of signal. High resolution and high accuracy. That's right. the biggest benefit of these optical sensors. Okay, good. So you talk about your system on chip encoder where you 
put the uh, the actual components inside the component itself. So just talk us through now. You have a you 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 have an application here. Just talk about this is an evaluation system, is it? Yeah, that's an evaluation system uh, which um, we um, offer the customers for the first tests and uh, um, let's say trials in the lab. Uh, so it comes with an uh, encoder target, different sizes. Can also be a linear application or a linear scale yeah. instead of rotary one. Uh, we have the sensor board, uh, which is already mounted with the sensor. That's what you see underneath with the blue shining LED. And then uh, we have a, a certain um, adaption with um, some uh, what we call motherboards, where you can uh, get the signals uh, from the sensor uh, and also change maybe some settings um, that you like to have regarding the resolution or um, some, uh, let's say, settings of... Uh, um, Default right. Uh, so this is a very this is a very flexible environment. Yeah, definitely. And uh, the biggest advantage of uh, such a reflective uh, optical system is uh, we have a huge for an optical sensor, which gives you high resolution and high accuracy. Even we have uh, very high uh, mechanical tolerances. Right. That means, for example, the air gap between the disc and the sensor can be up to one two millimeter, right. uh, and can change also dynamically. Uh, and the system or the signals of the system are still stable. Right. So that's uh, one of the biggest advantages of such a system. Okay, so we've, we've talked about the real advantage of using a, an optical sensor like this uh, in, the, in, in the power of its accuracy. What you might be thinking is if I'm already using a magnetic sensor, you know, this is a bit of a jump to go to, to a type of technology that I might, I might not have used before. So just talk us through very simply when they come to you and say, right, I want to I want to evaluate whether uh, whether an optical sensor would be an optical encoder would be the right kind of thing for me. What would I have to know? What are, what are the things that you do here that actually make that? What's the interaction that has to take place with you in order for them to make that jump? Uh, first of all, um, uh, we have to talk of, so, of operating temperatures. Uh, that's also an important thing. Um, what is the environment? Uh, this kind of sensor, for example, works between minus 40 to 125 degrees, so really huge industrial temperature range, which can fit to a lot of applications. Uh, we have, of course, uh, to be honest, a certain drawback that the environment sh should be dust-free and uh, no, um, I would say, uh, humidity or uh, um, uh, should be no uh, waterproofed environment. Yeah. So that's, of course, quite for sure for an optical system important. But, um, so there is some environmental things that they have to take into account with right. an optical application. Right, right. So there are parameters. There are parameters right, uh, okay. different to other approaches yes, like the magnetic or yep. inductive sensors. Yep. Uh, but then it comes to um, customers to talk about the resolution, the sizes. There are um, customers using um, mini motors just of down to let's say 10 millimeter diameter discs because the uh, motor is very small, the environment or the package housing is very tight. Um, and the, of course there are customers, uh, let's say, doing some hollow shaft application where they need a really big hole or bore in between or in, inside. And therefore we can design, for example, uh, for customers uh, for such applications, a certain design of the disc, which still works with the sensor uh, of PSL3212. So there are some um, services supports from our side to the customers depending on his application and uh, uh, right. housing. I right. would say. So really, if you're if you're if you're doing if, if if at the moment you're using a magnetic sensor, all that you really need to know is to understand the environment and the parameters, right. and then actually it's a re it's a relatively seamless move from needing that much much greater accuracy. Right. So you shouldn't be worried about oh. That's going to be complicated. You just go, no, I can do that. I just need to understand the environment. I just need to understand the parameters, and then I can start looking at optical encoders for my measurement. Right, and then we can re recommend some targets, uh, depending if there are shock vibration issue, whatever. Uh, so there are certain uh, different alternatives, I would right. say. Right. So you so in certain applications, you're able to offer some variability in the kind of things that you would offer the customer, the end the end customer. Right. Okay, good. So I think it's been a really good introduction from Gorham about how, if you're using magnetic sensors and you're thinking about, I need real ac accuracy either in my automotive or in my industrial or my medical application, and I really need to know 
where those things are moving and what they're doing. Optical sensors are an absolutely imperative way of moving forward. So it's a really good introduction. Um, go to IC House, ask them to get their evaluation kit that we've talked through here, and they can help you find that solution to give you those measurements that you need in your application. Goran, thank you very much. Thank you. Very good. good